Yo! Video games. What up dudes, Matt here from Yo Video Games and I'm back with, I guess you could call it a real talk because I can't really do a reaction video, I mean I could've, but there was just so much wonderful, beautiful, amazing DMCA in yesterday's Sony State of Play that I feel I couldn't really get away with doing pure reactions. I tried last time to cut up, you know, as much as I could, but it almost just came together a little too garbled and, and maybe, maybe some people like the snappiness of it, but whatever. I'm going to keep it short and simple today. Hey, it was a short and simple state of play. I'm going to keep my, my feelings short and simple. So I'm going to give you kind of like a days after digest of this and just kind of like give you my general thoughts on what happened. Um, when they announced it like a week ago, they, you know, said, hey, it's going to be a third party focused state of play. I was like, they're not showing Final Fantasy 16. It was funny how much the internet was like convinced this is it. This is the time. It missed TGS, but it is now ready. It is here. It is ready to make its mark on the world. To make 2021 a fantastic new year of brand new explosion of information. No. No. There was no Final Fantasy 16. There wasn't ever going to be Final Fantasy 16. But that doesn't mean there weren't other surprises. And obviously, you know what I'm talking about there. But, yeah. They, they came out and said, hey, it's only going to be 20 minutes. Um, I think, like, before, right before the, the State of Place, Tony said, like, we're going to have an update on Little Devil Inside. I feel like that really should have set the tone. Like, this is going to be third-party games, smaller projects, none of that triple I experience that you know, people were just thinking they were going to get. Now, I'm not sure if I would blame Sony for this. You could say, oh, they set themselves up because last, you know, September they had a big state of play where they ended with five first-party game announcements. But this time, you know, they look, it's shorter. It's focused on, on third parties. We're kind of highlighting an indie here. So, yeah. Um, people never know how to keep their expectations in check, and that's a little unfortunate. But, okay, so what did we get? We got a really weird game at the start, which was Death Burst Let It Die, which is a PvPVE game. Uh, free to play as the first let it die was uh game you know that sort of continues that that universe it reminds me a lot of anarchy reigns like it looks like anarchy reigns with bots uh amongst the other playable you know uh human characters so whatever i don't really have an opinion on it other than it. yeah it just looks like that general batshit insanity that you get out of something from let it die you know th that sort of uh grasshopper manufacturer uh vaguely platinum kind of world or, or I'm not saying it's made by them I'm just saying like it's kind of in that sort of uh bonkers you know gonzo violence laden um uh, universe of of Japanese game design uh I don't really have a lot to say on it other than you know well would I be trying it no <laughs> um but you know it did it was it was an okay way to start off like a short simple direct like that um and they followed up with this really bizarre meta ass um I guess you could call it, I don't want to say visual novel, but I would say like something closer to Aiken between a visual novel and a telltale game where you play as a band and there's like a, actually like a, like a song kind of like music rhythm thing related to it. So it's like, it's episodic. It's, it's mostly sort of like a choose your own adventure style thing. Um, it, it's got like this sort of like music rhythm based thing, uh, tied into it. So you get like a new song at the end of each episode for this, this band, this up and coming band. I don't really care. I I thought, like, okay, it was kind of funny at first where they were kind of going a little, like, meta on all, like, you know, the, the generic meme trailer lines. But then they just kind of, like, okay, you had this kind of, like, fun intro that was, you know, a little bit Devolver Digital style. And then they just, like, stretched this fucking thing out, like, butter scraped over too much bread. So it, it, it went from, okay, this is, I guess, what they're, I get what you're going with here, too. Now that you're getting a little long here. Uh, and that's all I got to say about it. We are OFK. Uh, I will be AFK on playing OFK. And then, strangely enough, Bug Snacks is getting a big uh, free DLC next year. Um, the, the big meme lord game that, you know, replaced Knack 3 since none of you bought Knack 2, so they didn't get a Knack 3. So we got Bug Snacks instead for the PS5 launch, and everyone memed the hell out of this game, and then it was completely forgotten about within a week. Uh, it's getting a big DLC. Now, here's the crazy thing I don't even think the DLC is coming till early next year, and yeah early 2022 but they did the right thing because it's a big free update because by the time that dlc comes out it's going to be over a year we're getting close to like a year and a half from when the first bug snacks came out and there has no one has said anything about that game since it came out which you know, it was actually a decent game i think one thing bug snacks probably had over knack was that it was actually kind of like 
a hidden actually it was a hidden gem like there's a re some really cool um stuff hidden in the in, in the uh the side quests and the npcs and the sort of like the characterization and like what what the characters were doing and dealing with like it has like you know like that that you know that, that weird funny haha -ha, like you know go to an island full of uh, uh food animals you know you know cloudy with a chance of meatballs too shit but once you get past that there's actually there's just some fairly decent fun not even fun but like interesting deep dives into character narratives there uh which a lot of people just don't know because i don't think a lot of people actually played bug snacks they just memed it uh but it's getting a big free update so you know regardless of of whether or not it's coming too late at least you, we can say like okay it actually was a pretty decent game so uh they followed that up with five nights at freddy's whatever <sighs> whatever it was like security breach i don't even know what to say anymore other than it just feels I've been wrong before, <clears throat> so I gotta be. I feel like I gotta be careful with what I say here, but I kind of feel like the 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 explosion of fandom, the hype, if you will, for the franchise is is kind of fizzled out. <laughs> uh, but I've been completely wrong about that before, where I was where where a game would get a sequel way 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 after its last entry, and we'll get to that later too. And I was kind of like, does anyone care anymore? I don't know. I I feel like the fandoms kind of like died out or started to fizzle out. And I've been completely wrong before where like, okay, then this sequel comes out and it's fucking huge again and it's even bigger than before. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is, this is the shot in the arm and it's going to make the franchise, you know, explode even harder than it did before. Or maybe, maybe, maybe it is just fizzle. I don't know. Uh, as far as the actual game, I don't really have much to say. It looks like it's a lot more interactive, I guess. Uh, it's not clicking screens. It actually looks like you're moving around doing shit. So, it it, it looks like the concept with a budget. So, uh, I don't have much to say that. Death's Door, the the bird, uh, bird souls, bird Zelda, uh, that that's coming to PS4, uh, PS5, Switch on in November. A lot of people ask me to play this game, and I don't know why because it doesn't. There's nothing wrong with the way the game looks, but it also looks like fairly looks a lot like a lot of other indie games of its of its style and genre i'm not sure why people were obsessed with me playing death's door maybe because it stars a bird i, I, just, I don't know i don't know is that the connection is that why i keep getting requests to play death's door uh just be just because it has a bird even though there's many games that look exactly like this you know especially in the indie scene and are of you know, reported really good quality. So I don't know. I don't know what what in particular makes Death's Door such a um, highly requested game on my part. You bird, 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 bird. Well, I don't know. Whatever, bird. Um, <laughs> and then there was like some some really apparently there's they they, they followed that up again. So as you can kind of see with what the what's going on with State of Play, not a lot of like super you know uh, not, not huge announcements. Mostly just updates or. Or uh, announcements of smaller projects, and then there was this thing called a uh, cart rider drift. You know, it, it looked like the kind of fucking thing you'd see, you know, hanging out in in the used section of of the Wii at your local GameStop. Some Eminem cart racer, Garfield cart racer, you know, um, homies cart racer, something like that. But apparently, it's really big in in mainland Asia. So I don't know. It, it might be one of those things where it's like, okay, in, 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 in another part of the world, which I don't live in and I don't have any knowledge of, this is actually fucking huge and this is a big deal for some people. Uh, that's what I've that's what I've been told. I don't really know. It, Mario Kart without Mario, Mario Kart without Mario, um, to me, don't really have much to say. Okay, one of the big, but one of the big exciting things after that, at least for for this channel, for me, for others, was hey, King of Fighters 15. We got to see Dolores. We got to see her fighting. And then we got the announcement of an open beta, which is fucking great. I, I love that. Uh, it's got online casual, online rooms, and offline training. Fan fucking tastic. Uh, this is this is good for this is just win win all around. Because uh, King of Fighters is always you know it's it's always been quality. It's never quite you know reached some some explosion of of you know of sales, if you will, of some of the other fighting games, but I feel like there's a real good shot here where it can do what Guilty Gear did before, and kind of what Sam Show did, which is like, it just comes in at the right place at the right time, doesn't have a lot of competition, and, it's, and you just get people excited about it, because hey, these are really good, really in-depth fighting games, so having a, a three-day window to jump into a, the, the open beta is fantastic. We only get eight characters, but you know, it should be fine. There's this going to be a lot more, obviously, at launch. Uh, in February, but this is this is really good. I see this as an absolute win. This is this is going to be great for 
sort of uh, anyone who's looking for for their next big fighting game, you know, because it looks like Tekken and Street Fighter, you know, and and and, and whatever NetherRealm's cooking up, they seem like they're kind of far off. Like, well, we don't really know what's going on with NetherRealm, but like, like Street Fighter's still just about to end with whatever Luke or whoever that you know, you know, a generic man Bond generic. Um, fighter or whatever and Tekken's pretty much done so it's like yeah we're kind of in like this this period where like Strive came out Strive was good and okay so what's like the next big big thing because you know we don't really know and, and Strive's roster is kind of small uh, right now but King of Fighters has a big roster obviously not in the open beta but this is going to be great this is going to be great for, I think for for the game for the franchise for the fans and for the newcomers too I think this is actually going to be good for newcomers to really step in and see okay here what is King of Fighters how does it feel what is it what's it like um and and this this really does look like a gameplay and 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 everything movement and flow everything about a 15 does look like the natural follow-up to 14 um now, I'm not saying that to be intimidating because there's a lot of deep mechanics in it. I'm not saying it's to be intimidating to people who are not familiar with King of Fighters because it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. King of Fighters has always been uh, crazy in depth. Uh, but, like, if you liked 14, I think this looks like a natural extension of it. It looks, you know, like they're they're following a very, you know, uh, uh, evolutionary scale right there. So I'm very happy about that. I'm actually really excited that they got this, and I think it's going to do great things for the franchise. Uh, I, I highly encourage everyone to check out the open beta. I think you'll find a lot to like with it. Um, the games are great, and and I, Dolores looks cool. She looks like a like an Earthbender or something. I don't know. It's it's fun. Um, and then to sort of like come down and deflate the hype a little bit from from that part, we got. Whatever the Among Us game was, the 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 not Among Us, the first class trouble, <laughs> the the game which was apparently captured on a PS5 but runs like it's on the Nintendo Switch, uh, it comes out in a week and it has, woof, uh, not great looking frame rate. Uh, that was kind of a running theme it seemed like in this show. Is a lot of these games had kind of questionable looking frame rates. Uh, yeah, um, obviously it looks like a more involved 3d among us you know the best thing i can say about it hey it's 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 a free game next month so you know what if, if you're interested in checking it out you don't not going to cost you a penny this is the best the best possible thing for this game uh and then there was the big surprise which probably most people will be wondering what did you see what did you think what did you think what did you see did you see it? yes i saw the star ocean 6 trailer i'm and yes, I'm kind of excited. Um, Star Ocean has not been good in a long time. Uh, Tri-Ace, I'm kind of even shocked, is even around in any capacity to basically get funding for a full project of their own. But I guess Square's going with it. Uh, yeah, Star Ocean 4, not good. Uh, Star Ocean 3, woo, that plot twist. And, and Star Ocean 5, um, yeah, so... If we're going off of their their recent past, which is actually kind of like we're we're from years apart from that now. It's been a while since even five, so maybe it's a new day. Like let's cut, let's try to look at it as a, as a fresh new start. It looks a lot like PSO two New Genesis, um, which is fine. Again, the frame rate was particularly awful at certain parts in this trailer, which is worrisome. But I feel that Trice is doing the right thing here, where they're trying to go big and ambitious. And they're they're really advertising the fact that you can go anywhere. It's it's a very you've got like this one of the main characters has like this hover jetpack thing, and they're like you can really truly like fly around in full three sixty degree space. And great, I love that. I love the fact that they show you just kind of like leaping off of like you know big cliffs and down into big areas. I I do like that. Um, I hope for the best. I think one thing probably everyone kind of missed on uh, Star Ocean 6 is that Akiman of Street Fighter fame is doing the character designs. Apparently he did the last Star Ocean game. I, I didn't even know that. Um, but I will say that like his art for, for the game, I actually think the art's really good because Akiman's a good artist. Uh, holy crap, it's not translating well into 3D though. Uh, the character models are... They're something. Um, they're not good. And 
It's funny because people always think like, oh, you play this. And I'm like, yeah, I play Xenoblade 2. Are the the character designs in that game good? No. (laughs) Like, I don't think they're good. Like, you can love something a lot and not love everything about it. I don't know why that's a weird foreign concept for so many fucking people. But, I mean, yeah, it... The character models in Star Ocean 6 look off. They look weird. They don't They don't match. The art's great. The character art for them by Ocumen's great. And, and yes, that's absolutely true for some of the games I play. Some of the games I love. Some of the games I've played hundreds of hours of. It's 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 not an all or nothing, okay? You know, it's, not everything is completely black, completely white. Like, you can love a lot about something and not love everything. Um, so, I'm excited for Star Ocean uh, 6, The Divine Hope, or whatever the fuck. Um, I immediately, as, as we found out, Matoy Sakuruba is doing the soundtrack, which was like no shock to me. Like he's done all the Star Ocean soundtracks. I could kind of like, I could tell it was like modern day uh, Sakuruba because it sounded a lot like Tales of Arise, and it and sure enough, he's composing for this game. That's that's awesome. Uh, I I pray to God, I pray to fucking God, they give him more money and 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 more possible just tracks to do because. That was a big problem with Tales of Arise, where, like, the music was good, but holy shit, there was just not a lot in it. Uh, And then they ended off with an extremely long deep dive into Little Devil Inside, uh, which, I, there's nothing wrong, the game is cute and, and, and whatever, but I'm really confused as to why Sony was giving so much precedence, so much time, so much uh, effort, you know, so much of a focus on this title, it was the one that they advertised uh, you know, in the state of play before before it came out. It's the one I think they spent the most actual you know time of the of the state of play on, and I it's fine. It looks cute. I just don't I don't know what Sony sees in this that I don't. I feel like I'm missing something here. Like it looks like a cute, charming uh, indie action RPG ish game. What am I? Uh, what am I not getting here? It, what, I don't know if there's like some pedigree with the developer that I'm not aware of, um, or what. But like it's, it's just, it's just weird to me. I'm not sure. Maybe it's like a Sony's publishing it where they're not publishing, you know, other indie games. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Either way, uh, you know, it looks fine. Uh, it's, 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 in, it's, I guess, I don't even want to say it's interesting it, cause like it's, it's, it looks fine to me, but like, I just don't know what, I don't know what, what the, uh, I don't know what the focus on it is, but whatever. Maybe it'll come out and it'll be like a 10 out of 10 and then it'll all make sense. I mean, maybe that's it. Maybe that's just the end of the day. It's just, it'll all make sense when it comes out and it gets like the highest fucking Metacritic score of all time. Uh, but uh, I'm not disappointed in this direct, or sorry, say to play, whatever, same thing, uh, because I had zero expectations going in. I knew we weren't going to get 16. We weren't going to get remake part two. We weren't going to get Metal Gear Solid remake. We're not going to get a Silent Hill re, you know, reboot. You know, it's like we're, you know, we're not going to get any cool Sony first party stuff. Um, but it looked fine. Like there, were, you know, the only like to me, the only like genuine surprise for me was that Star Ocean Six is going to get funded. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm. I'm not really a fan per se, but I'm not a hater either. I'm just sort of neutral on Star Ocean. Um, I'm I'm very shocked that Square's funding it. Square's getting a packed 2022, by the way, because they've got like Stranger of Paradise and Forspoken, maybe 16, uh, Babylon's Fall, Star Ocean 6, um, uh, uh, Triangle Strategy. They have a fucking packed year next year. Like, holy Jesus. Like, it's going to... It's going to be busy for Square next year. I just hope it turns out well, but, you know, some of those games I'm, hmm, hmm, I'm still real on the fence about, and I really, it sucks, because I feel like I'm on the fence about a lot of, a lot of Square's 22 games, and I feel like I shouldn't be on the fence about them at all. I feel like I should be on board with them immediately, but, oh well, is what it is. Uh, this, this was a thing, um, let me know how you guys feel about the Sony State of Play. Uh, if, let me know if your dreams and hopes were crushed forever, or if you were kind of like me and was like, I'm not expecting anything, and anything that's that's unexpected is can mostly be a positive. So, again, let me know what you think, and I'll see you on the channel. Later, dudes.